able to be alive? <laughs> I don't know. You could become a doctor, a lawyer, a physician, an accountant, a barrister. <laughs> but I don't want to be any of those things. Eh, you don't want to be in any of those things I've been. Okay. <laughs> so what are you going to do with your life? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you, Yasmin? What does that even mean? Being of both African and Caribbean heritage, I've spent my life enjoying the benefits of rich and beautiful culture, yet struggling to identify who I am as an individual and who I'd want to become in the future. Does that resonate with anybody here in the audience today? See, one side of my family was a little bit too relaxed in an approach towards discussions of my future, with the other side quite ruthless and stern in an approach towards education, with small undertones of, any career is acceptable, just as long as it's approved by everyone else, <laughs> in terms of my future. It was almost as though the greater the bragging rights, the greater the achievement. I mean, which person doesn't want to lean over to their uh, neighbour in a local pub, mosque or synagogue and boast about the achievements of their young ones. It's a moment of pride that can't be taken away from a parent. But the thing is, it's not about your parents. It's about you. So what does being you mean anyway? Well, after lengthy periods of reflection and replaying the highs and lows of my life thus far, I discovered what being you meant and found an acronym for it in order to help me better understand, of which I'd like to share with you all today. So let's break it down. Y O U. Y for yearly, O for observational, and U for understanding. Yearly indicates time. This is significant because discovering what you means is a journey. Yeah? OK. <laughs> I myself had gone through several different career changes. High profile jobs too. My CV was undeniably fantastic. <laughs> but what do you do when you find yourself having become a scientist a veterinarian and a teacher all before the tender age of 14 and still have no clear direction. <laughs> it's only later on in life that I found that it's commonplace at this age to not know who you want to become. See, at the age of seven, I formed a relationship with my teachers that led me to feel I wanted to become a teacher myself. Between ages 10 to 12, I had a Dr. Doolittle-esque passion for animals that made me feel that I wanted to become a veterinarian but I could somehow hear the disapproving voices of my family members in my head saying, Boje, veterinary! <laughs> <laughs> Those creatures are dirty. Black people not play with animals. Why you want to do that for? <laughs> At age 14, I had an enthusiasm for science that transcended my predicted grades and performance in school. So much so, I came to the conclusion I wanted to become a scientist. Maybe even find a cure for something. But all of these vocational choices were short-lived because I didn't feel that any of them would be met with a seal of approval. This made me increasingly unhappy over time because I wasn't living for myself. I was living to please others. This then led me to have numerous thoughts of confusion and if I'm completely honest, I felt lost. I was trying too hard to please others, one in particular, my dad. The one who insisted I didn't read enough and that I should aim higher. All your age mates know, so why don't you? If you're from an African background, I'm sure you would have heard this statement before in numerous different contexts. See, I understand and accept my culture I even accept that this is a commonplace attitude amongst an older generation. It just didn't help my confidence very much. If you remember, yearly indicates time. 
And this is significant because discovering what you means is a journey. And my journey, clearly this was the age before rise filter. <laughs> <laughs> and my journey took me to Philadelphia, USA in 2003, where I was selected by my school as part of the Gifted and Talented program to deliver a speech in the USA for a renowned organization known as 100 Black Men. I was asked to deliver a speech as well as play my trumpet. With a dry mouth and sweaty palms, I challenged myself to do something I'd never done before. And I delivered a rendition of Louis Armstrong's A Wonderful World. My remix of Dud Notes was less than wonderful in my personal opinion, but I was received with a standing ovation and commended for my efforts. The irony of this situation is that I was deemed as gifted and talented by everybody else other than myself. That moment there was significant because it was the first of a number of yearly observational understandings that allowed me to better understand myself later down the line. And it will for you too. When you come to understand the importance of every single day that passes that contributes to your personal growth, you begin to value your time that much more. I know I certainly did. My day and your day will always look different. How we even choose to spend our day will also be varied. But if we're all aiming for the same destination, success, is how we get there really that important? Yes, because the purpose of the journey is to aid transition before you get to your end goal and serve as a personal benchmark for you to monitor your progress and development. Show of hands in the audience, how many of you here find yourself making a note of your achievements to date on the approach of a birthday or a new year? <laughs> Why is that? Because you care enough about yourself and the person you want to become to start giving yourself that annual pep talk and kick it up a notch if you aren't there yet and do better. Which leads on to O, observational. As each fragment of time elapses and you begin to gather an awareness of yourself, you begin to start noticing behavioural patterns. Some of them come in the form of habits, good and bad. Sometimes it's knowing the difference between planning and procrastination. Working on your weaknesses and capitalising upon your strengths. I myself was the biggest of procrastinators, or at least I thought so. I couldn't work out if my lack of action was due to no confidence, uncertainty, or just sheer laziness. The fact of the matter is, it was a combination of all three. See, what had happened is, over the years, I developed a bad habit. I'd formed some kind of perfectionism, if you will, that if I couldn't get something right the first time, I found myself running away. I had to become comfortable with asking for help. And what I found is that it's OK to be vulnerable. It's OK to make mistakes. It's even OK to not be OK. Just don't sit around in silence hoping that the problem will solve itself, because nine times out of 10, that doesn't do anything, in my personal opinion. I challenge you all here in the audience to ask a friend, a partner, or a loved one to observe you and come up with three things about yourself. They can text, they can WhatsApp, they can tweet. And what you will find is that that exercise will either help you or it will hurt you, but by the end of it, you will understand that little bit better who you are and if you're heading in the right destination in terms of who you want to become. Once you begin to understand your behavioural patterns, you can work towards fixing them. Which finally leads me on to you, understanding. After several years of a journey of living, loving and laughing along the way, and the climax of a particularly bad year of unemployment, a health scare and numerous personal battles, I had won. I finally understood what you meant. 
Every setback is a great moment for a comeback. Every tear you cry is water for the garden of your victory. Every trial you face is a stepping stone towards greater heights. You don't need to be worried about pleasing other people. You don't need to be afraid of becoming the person that you're destined to be. Work towards your weaknesses and celebrate your strengths. Your spirit, your mind, and your determination is what will get you towards your end goal. So always keep you in mind. Yearly observational understanding. And if you don't know who you are or who you're going to be tomorrow, be sure to understand that you are somebody of importance today. Work to the power of you. Thank you.